Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this cool problem. Um, this problem uh, was suggested by a viewer. It's very closely related to a previous problem that we've done on the channel, so we're going to use that result in order to help us. Now this problem is we have two objects with two different masses, so this will be m1, this will be m2, and the distance between them is r. And we want to find how much time it takes for them to collide. So as you can see, I have the answer down here, because obviously in physics, it's not about finding the answer, it's about proving it. So let's go ahead and jump right into how we're going to solve this. Now, in a previous video, we proved this formula, which gives the time that it takes for an object to collide into a much more massive object, assuming that the much more massive object doesn't move at all. Um, and so obviously, this is a very similar situation to what we have going on here. Uh, I'm just going to reference this equation again. I just wanted to put it here, and I'll link the video in a card um, right now. So if you want to check that one out, feel free to. And anyway, let's jump right into the problem. So if we consider our object number one with mass m1, the force that's going to be acting on it is going to be g m um, m1 m2 over r of t squared. And I'm writing r of t um, because that's just going to be a function of time which represents the distance between our two objects, right? So r of 0 equals r, and that's just our starting position. And this means that the acceleration experienced by object number 1 is going to be g m2 over r of t squared. Similarly, for object number two, the force is exactly the same, but the acceleration experienced by object number two is g m1 over r of t squared. Now, here's the part where it gets a little bit interesting and a little bit confusing at the same time. If object number one is accelerating towards object number two, just directly just in a straight line, and object number two is accelerating towards object number one, this actually means that both of these forces, that both of these accelerations are um, can be considered as acceleration on the distance function. So r of t, its um, second derivative is decreasing at a rate of a1 plus a2. And that's because whenever either of these objects are going towards each other, that's decreasing the distance, right? No matter what it is. So we can actually write this as r double prime equals this plus this, right? Except obviously they're going to be negative because they're causing the um, the rate the distance to decrease rather than increase. So it's going to end up being negative g m1 plus m2 over r of t squared. And I'll write this as r double prime of t, I guess. So this is actually very similar to our original problem, which resulted from the differential equation y prime prime equals negative gm over y squared. And you can see it's almost the exact same thing. And so now we're essentially looking at our problem. It's actually the same problem as one object that's falling towards another object with mass m1 plus m2, where the second object doesn't move at all. We kind of shifted our problems that everything's, one object is stationary and the other object is moving, rather than both objects moving towards each other. Because overall, if you think about it, that has the same net effect. And so this is going to describe our problem. And so essentially, this, if we use our formula for the last problem, which resulted to this um, answer, in this case, m is going to equal m1 plus m2, right? And r1, now in our last problem, r1 represented the stopping point. But in this problem, we're talking about when two objects will collide. So that stopping point will be when r equals 0. So we can plug in into this formula for t, m equals m1 plus m2, and r1 equals 0. And r0 is the same thing, it's just the starting position however far away they are. So r0 equals r. So if we plug this into our formula, we're going to get t equals r to the 3 halves 
over 2 square root 2g m1 plus m2. Then for this square root, when r1 is 0, this whole uh, this whole thing squared is just going to be negative 1 squared, which is 1, and so that whole square root is just going to disappear. So we don't have to worry about that. For the inverse cosine, again, when r1 is 0, this whole bit is going to be 0, and so it's inverse cosine of negative 1, which is just uh, which is just pi. So if we go ahead and simplify our answer, you can see that we can pretty easily arrive at the answer t equals pi r to the 3 halves over 2 square root 2g m1 plus m2. And so although this was a relatively quick problem and all we did was apply a, a formula from another video, I think it's actually very interesting, um, a very interesting practice on how to take one problem solution and apply it to another problem, which is something that engineers and scientists do every day. It's basically what an engineer is always trying to do, trying to figure out how to reduce it to a problem that's already been solved before. So uh, thank you for this viewer suggested problem. Uh, it wasn't exactly something new, but it definitely helped me, um, it definitely helped us understand how to apply different situations and different formulas to problems that they originally weren't intended to. So this is our answer. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Bye. See you in the next video.